Most of you all know that I moved into this new studio space a little over two months ago and I've been producing a lot of videos here and I've also had a lot of comments of people asking if I could do a little tour and walkthrough of the space that I'm using so I thought that'd be a good topic for today so without further ado let's do a tour. The challenge in designing this studio was to come up with a space that would accommodate all the various things that I do. So obviously as a photographer I have post-production on images that I do in here as well as scanning film. I film in here for my YouTube channel and I needed a space to do editing for that as well as filming. And then finally I also do music production. Now I don't do soundtrack work for every video that I make but I do it on special things that I do like artist series videos and that kind of thing. So I needed a space that would accommodate all of that and I needed to do it on a budget. And I'm sure most of you guys know that when you move everything is outrageously expensive and I'm, we're renting this place and planning on being here around a year or so so I didn't want to have to do a whole lot of work that was going to cost a lot of money and be permanent um, I don't own the space and we're looking at a year or so so I needed something that would work and so budget was a big concern the biggest challenge in this space was the video aspect of it and getting it ready to film in and when I moved in the landlord kind of had this off-white yellow that was absolutely disgusting on the walls might work for a bedroom but looked terrible on video. That mixed with the fact that I was in loft space for so long and I'm kind of competing with that because it had all this great exposed brick and this really interesting visual look to it so I needed this space to do something. So two things I did um, to address that were paint the walls and deal with the lighting. Some of you have asked about the paint and what I did was I used a color that you can get at Home Depot. It's actually a Ralph Lauren series of paints. They're not super cheap but also not super expensive either but they do make textured finishes and a lot of these finishes are pretty garish to look at but this one I really liked and it's a suede finish and you can get it in different colors and so the color I chose is called falling water and it's kind of a medium gray but almost a little bluish tint to it and so a couple reasons why I picked that one I thought it looked good in video and two having kind of a middle gray tone for your walls really helps when you're doing any color work for video or still work and so it just is a nice adjustment for your eyes so anyway so that's the color I ended up going with now the second thing I did that was really key and this is absolutely essential if you're ever setting up a studio to do video in and you want to do it on a super budget is I wanted to mainly use the lighting that was here with some modifications so the first thing I did and this is the first thing you want to do if you're setting something up too is you want to make sure all of the light bulbs match and that is absolutely key even if you get daylight balanced or soft white bulbs or whatever if you get them from different manufacturers I've noticed in the past that sometimes you can get kind of some weird color shifts going with the white balance and that is a major pain and takes a lot of time in post-production it's really hard to fix so that's the first thing I did to be a time saver on that was to get all bulbs of the same brand same model everything and put them and so the four bulbs that are in the seat are just the recessed cans and that helped but it didn't give me enough of a soft light for what I'm doing in here which is essentially portrait lighting so the other key and this is awesome because this is a great way to do video lighting super cheap is I got one of these Japanese paper lanterns that you can get on amazon.com for about ten dollars and literally all that's inside is it's a light bulb that's hung to a cord that goes plugs into the wall and I put the same light bulb in here as I use in the cans but what happens is the paper um, does this nice diffusion so it's a really cheap way to get really nice light in your videos and essentially you are doing portrait lighting so if I didn't have that you don't have the same softness on the face and stuff and it's really hard to deal with in fact sometimes I just use that as the only light I'll turn off the others in the room and it darkens the background and gives a nice cast across the face and stuff so that's a really nice way to do portrait lighting the other thing I did and I'm gonna put some more hooks in the ceiling so I can move this around and get a little bit of versatility to that but this saved me from having to set up my studio lights in here which I didn't really want to set up because there's a lot to it and they require stands and they take up more space and it just it, I wanted a place that didn't feel like it was temporarily set up that I was actually using this full time all the time and so this was a really good solution for that so those are the two main main modifications I did to the room this is my camera shelf setup and I obviously ripped this idea off from Casey Neistat who has one and this is probably one of the most useful things I've ever put together and you know I have a lot of different cameras that I use for different things and I'm really 
really bad about not knowing where the charger is or not recharging the battery. And so the whole idea here is that I have a place where everything goes and when I put it there, the camera battery goes on the charger. So it's always ready and at an arm's length in a moment's notice. And I think that's really important. If I have to go look for something and that kind of goes for anything in my office space, if I have to go find something, um, it interrupts workflow and it's not very efficient or productive. The other thing I did is I put some LED lights that I bought at Home Depot. They're just string lights and I put them on the undersides of the bottom shelves so you could get a little bit of light on things and see down there. It does get pretty dark. So moving over to the other side, this is my main storage area and I've got these shelves that I had in the loft space and so again I didn't want to do build-ins plus some of these have heavy things on them. So I've got my printers over here. This is my nice Epson printer that I talked about a couple weeks back and then I've got a smaller document printer that I use for general office stuff. The rest of this side I like to keep pretty sparse so I can kind of keep things that I'm working on at the moment. On the other side I've got some odds and ends, some other cameras, my Korg MS20 that I use for audio production occasionally. And this is a little problem right now, but I have these backpacks strewn everywhere. So I've got the drone in this one and some camera lenses and another one. And so I need to come up with a system where maybe I hang those from the ceiling in the hallway or the other storage area. So finally, we have my main office area and I'll kind of walk you through this. The main setup here on this very worn out desk here, as you can see, is I use a 5K iMac Retina and uh, I absolutely love it. It is a very fast computer and looks beautiful and it makes video editing and still image editing an absolute joy to work with. I have two KRK monitors there that you see and those are mainly used for doing audio work and so I can do all my mixing and mastering and things like that there as well. Uh, moving over to the far left, um, that little lamp stand just basically holds the cable modem and then the airport extreme that provides Wi-Fi to the house. I've got my film scanner here, a bunch of lens caps and odds and ends, and then I have a blue Yeti microphone that I use for voiceover work or if I'm doing screencasts or something like that. And then back here I've got two Lacie six terabyte hard drives which store photos and video. And then over on the right hand side here, oh, I do use a Wacom tablet which I am a big proponent of. Um, years ago I used to have wrist trouble working at the computer a lot and uh, I thought about going with the Wacom to just check it out for doing photo editing work and it is great for that but I just use it as a mouse and it's incredible absolutely love it and then finally over on the right hand side I've got a couple pedals over here and my guitar setup is pretty minimal these days because I do a lot of music composition with various things like I showed you the Korg keyboard earlier um, there's also a Korg Volca keys which is that small box on the front side there that basically is an analog synthesizer and sequencer built in, which is really cool. And then the two pedals in the back are from Strymon. There's a blue sky, or sorry, the big sky is on the left, and then the timeline is, is the one in the middle. And then sometimes I'll put another pedal on that empty space over there. And I run these into the computer. You can kind of see it, that red box back there is the Scarlet uh, interface, which is just a USB interface. And it's really nice because it gives me, when I'm doing soundtrack work, it's not all just keyboards all the time. And I use amp simulators, um, software in the computer and so I use a lot of the T-Rack stuff from IK Multimedia and so they'll do things like you know simulate Fender Twin amplifiers and stuff so you can really do all your recording direct. This was a big deal because if I'm going to record guitar in here, I can't really, there's no space for amps and mics and setup like that. So this, this is a really good solution for doing stuff like that. And then, yeah, this is pretty much where I do all my work. And as you can see, this desk is really getting worn out. I've had it forever. And the veneer is starting to strip up in the front there uh, from too much work. But this is where I do all kinds of things from uploading videos and editing and working on photos and updating the website and all that fun stuff. If you are interested in building a website or an online portfolio, you might want to check out our sponsor today who are the awesome folks over at Squarespace.com. Squarespace is an all-in-one solution for building beautiful websites. In fact, that is their slogan, build it beautiful. And they take all the stress and the headache out of building a website and allow you just to focus on making awesome content. Basically, if you go over to their website, you can start with any one of their templates. They're all fully customizable and just absolutely gorgeous looking. And Squarespace also comes with a fully integrated backend system. So updating your website could not be easier. In fact, if you can drag and drop a folder of images from your computer onto your web browser and move them around by clicking and dragging, you can build a portfolio or online store. You can check out Squarespace absolutely free. You don't need a credit card to sign up or anything. You just head over to squarespace.com and sign up for the free trial. And if you decide you want to subscribe after your trial ends, I can save you 10% off your initial order if you use offer code AOP. Once again, that is squarespace.com and the offer code on checkout is AOP. And once again, I want to give a special shout out and thanks to the folks at Squarespace for sponsoring another episode of The Art of Photography.
I am really excited about this space and I think that's largely due to the fact that I've never designed my own workspace before to exactly what my needs are and so I'm really excited about doing this. As most of you guys know, I lived in a loft in downtown Dallas and I was there for about 10 years and I really love that space and I really got spoiled because I pretty much used natural light for all these videos and I was on the southwest corner and they had these massive windows in there and even on a cloudy day you still had this nice diffused light that you could use in there and there was enough to film with and so I got spoiled of that and then moving into this space I mean this is a house built in the 50s so it's a lot different uh, the acoustics are terrible um, mainly because it's a lot of really live rooms with hardwood floors and they're all small and boxy and so echo is a problem and lighting has also been a problem because on a cloudy day there's almost no natural light you can use and then you have color temperature problems when you mix that with artificial lighting so I have a couple other projects that I want to do here and the next one I'm going to do is get some of the other parts of the house video ready because I think that would give me some more variety and depth in the videos that we do here especially when I sit down and want to show you books this space is a little tight for that I'm making it work but that's the next project and the second project which actually may be the first one I work on is I want to get my darkroom set up again and I most of you guys know I do a lot with darkroom printing and I want to do some printing coming up and I want to do some tutorials and stuff for the show as well and I don't have a space for that right now so there this is formerly the garage that has been turned into a spare bedroom and then right on the other side of this wall there is what used to be a screened in porch area that's been walled up now and has a bathroom in it and there's enough room because I have running water in there where I can set up my enlarger and do some work there as well so that will probably be the next project and I'm really excited about that because I want to get back into printing so hopefully as I get some of these other projects going along I'll give you some tours of those spaces as well but anyway you guys, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it and share it with your friends. And as always, subscribe to The Art of Photography so you'll be always up to date on all the latest and greatest videos we do here. Until the next video, I'll see y'all later.